Batman TV series. Batman this. Back to the Future. Um, kit concept. Light Industries 2000. And then we start on a new series of cars. These are all movie associated cars. Now we're going down to a new car that I've acquired. The Amici Veloci. Down to Monte Carlo. Down to a Plymouth Superbird. To a competing car, the Charger. To the Corbett Greenwood. Down to more unique cars of uh, sorts. This is the Curtis Sports Car, the Skylark, the uh, Moon Eyes Fleet Line, the Low Rider variety, um, typical Gasser, and this is a little bit different. This is the Vauxhall Opal. Uh, it's a cadet GT. Going over to fuel tankers, these are new releases. This is an Egypt. Going on to Lionhead, this is gas tank. Going up to electrics, this is the Hummer with the 4x4s. And the Hummer, uh, electric, then one of the more older Jeep Cherokees. This is a safari form with a rear tire and a roof rack. Um, a common Nissan. Um, hard body, uh, with a small cab at the back, you get into the tiny trucks, these are the K trucks from the Japanese fan K cars series, um, I think that's a Honda, I think they're all Hondas up here, another small Honda, and a Mighty K, and there was all three Mighty Ks, and then we've got a series of um, pickup wagons, this is the La Troca, um, then we're moving up to the Dodge Enterprise and a Low Lux for a time, um, then getting up to a shell, a truck for carrying, spare shell beds, fuel tank beds, going up higher in 4x4 four four range. We have a Toyota Jet Crew, we have a Toyota FJ Cruiser, I've got a second, I've just noticed we've got a second Hummer Electric, a Toyota 4Runner, and going back to the old classic. Um, Dodge van, and of course, he is a very um, famed Toyota van. Um, used to see these quite a lot around New Zealand, families and tourists, etc. I've had two vans very much like this. Moving over to some of the more exotic cars now. We're going up to the starting with first of all uh, VW, the ID VW <laughs> at the highest. Recorded speed around Nuremberg, <laughs> hybrid electric. Um, then we're going down to a Porsche 918, off to the VW series, um, and then to a basic VW that kind of started it all for VW, the People's Wagon. We go to a Mitsubishi 2000, uh, VR4, and then off to, I think this is a. Sorry, this is a Mercedes GMT, couldn't see it too clear. Mercedes GMT, AGM, uh, Bugatti, EB110, and a Lucid Air. These cars are just kind of coming online in the market, with the exception of Mitsubishi, which has gone out of line. But a lot of these cars are now getting into the more um, hypercar range or hybrid range that have super fast takeoff speeds. Getting down into the Nissan range, the prototypes are now the Nissan Z um, brand, carry the Z brand. Then we're getting into some of the Liberty Walk Nissan um, RRB version 2. Uh, the Nissan uh, 390 GTI, it was a very fast car in its time going on the track series. And then they did make road series cars, and this is, I think, one of the original colors for the road series. I've got a blue one in store, and I've got a a white one or a yellow one, I think I've also got those two colours in store. Then we go to the uh, drift car of the Nissan Maxima, I wish I had the Nissan sedan, but the very hard to get, people grab them off the shelf and put them on the market, so I was lucky to get that one. Haven't seen that, I do have a uh, Liberty Walk um, here, 
uh, sorry, this is Silhouette, but this is the Liberty Walk Commission, and this is the Silhouette series. Um, oh, just so much words in there, it's just ridiculous to try and get it all out. And then, of course, we go back to the old school, Nissan Junior. Okay, now we get into a very hypercar range series, and this will go on for quite a bit. Here we go. McLaren. McLaren Alva, new release card. I do have another McLaren series card that needs to go with the series. Uh, but McLaren have been developing and redeveloping and redeveloping. These are all the old F1s, the old black, orange. I've um, got those, got silver, got an overkill of F1s. Moving up to electric, coming into the Tesla range. Um, and everybody's aware of this uh, Tesla Cybertruck and we have the Tesla Roadster coming up to the Lamborghini series. I needed these two for my Lamborghini uh, collection, and I also needed this one to update my Lamborghini collection. And I've got one of these already in white in the box series, uh, and that's the four door Lamborghini um, e e Stoke. Very fast. Uh, this is the start of the classic Jamiro series, it's real cool, this has got the three cylinder piston engine that feeds three to four electric engine array and it is a two door four seater car. So this is the hypercar that enables families to buy this and go on the road. A whole new, a whole complete unique way I was setting up the hypercar arrangement. Up here, we're now getting into the Toyota series, and up here we start with the Toyota Lexus um, family, then going on to the Toyota GR Supra, Toyota GR Supra again, just to show you. More Toyota, another Toyota Super, and then we've got a Toyota AEB6 Sprinter Torino. Glad to have one on board. Again, these are very hot demand cars. They're very hard to get off the shelf when you can buy them. Um, boy racers and other collectors like to get those into their collection. Almost a standard. Uh, moving down to a Ford. Uh, uh, Ford Mustang and a Ford Sierra Custom Cosworth. I have no Cosworth in my collection, I don't remember. If I do, you know the old matchbox type, so this just kind of updates my Cosworth series. Coming down to Lotus Sport Elise, uh, another Sport Elise, and then Sport, and then a Lotus Amira. Now, the Lotus are starting to come out more with these sorts of car arrangements, so expect to see these more on the road in the collections coming through. Uh, Aston Martin, a Speedster, Aston Martin, Aston Martin. Valar Concept and Aston Martin Vantage. There are a few other Aston Martins that go in between these models. They are also in collection, so those will be added to those. Um, Pagani. And we've got the Pagani Zonda. I've got a couple of other Zondas, but they're not to scale. This starts off to... There's a couple of other Zonda series that goes before this, but this closes off more or less the end of the Zonda series before they went into high era. So glad to have the close off of that chapter. Then we're going to the Hyura series, and, and this is the um, open top uh, Hyura. Very nice cars. Um, the roller museum pieces um, right up there with Versace now. Um, and just so that people know that this guy, Horatio Pagani, did start with Lamborghini, and Lamborghini only went so far with his, with Pagani's um, idea of using carbon fiber composites in the car. And so Horatio Pagani went on to generate his own uh, car designs, um, and this is the product of that couple. Uh, Subaru, um, Brett, um, these cars are still around New Zealand, hard to find these days, rolling. Um, Subaru Pandem, and what have we got here? Subaru SVX. Um, coming up to the another new entrant. This company has done so much car design in the past. Globally, it's been a major uh, influence in how cars are designed in the hyper and the supercar range. Now they've decided to go full on and make their own hypercar design. This is what they come up. This, the house of Panina, 
Farina has come up with a new auto automobile called the Batista, and this is a hybrid electric, or I think it's all electric, with the sound of a fuel combustion engine of sorts inside the car, so that people can hear it coming and feel it coming too. I'm told. Um, and up here we've got two Audi. Um, these are kind of supercar hypercars with my family and uh, electric trons, very, very quick on top of the mark from what I've seen on YouTube. Coming over here, a few more miscellaneous cars to go. Um, these here are the Honda series. I'm happy to get a variety of Honda in here. And we've got the uh, Honda, Honda Civic. Then down to a smaller car pre Honda Civic was the Honda N600. Moving up to a more sporty type of Honda is the S2000 and another S2000 to follow that. Then we start with the Acura series, um, which um, really began the start of Honda's entrance into the supercar, hypercar world. Uh, this car did so well, it had an influence on um, a number of other supercars that came in uh, much later. You can tell that story in another video. And to conclude, all those hypercar, supercars, and all the most of the box cars, the Acura NSX GT3, which is probably the the fastest end of the Honda Acura um, uh, sports car models. Um, going further up, we start with motorbikes, scooters that I've collected a long way, some of them are loose, and some of them also packaged. Still working out some models of, of, of motorbikes, as well as the, this one here in particular being old. If anybody knows what that is, please let me know. The rider that I don't think belongs with it, but he's there anyway, so we'll keep him. Um, plastic scooter. Matchbox, motorbike and trailer, and a couple of other motorbikes to go. Got to go to the township and find the cub that parks up in the middle of the town and take a couple of photographs of these two cubs next to the full scale cub, and that'll be done. All right, we're just going to quickly run through some of the loose cars that I have picked up while I've been around uh, this year, and probably late last year. Um, real sweet, sweet car that I picked up, red line, I'm not going to go into the details, but you can imagine what those are. A little bit of matchbox military, try to avoid military where I can, but these are such collector's items, I thought I'll just at least have them in store, so it kind of completes, helps to complete my matchbox collection. Right down to a very old matchbox, I think it is, pretty sure it is, anyway, old to the truck, dump truck. Coming across around them to the first series of um, X-Wing fighters from the Star Wars uh, release. Missing the canopy, but still got one. And then we're coming up to an ATA walker. And this walker has a few articulating parts. And to include a door that drops down with a stormtrooper, snow trooper in, in, in the middle. See, and as you can see, with this at walker, I can take many different time places with it and do fly around. Uh, shots, but happy to have the AT-AT -AT Walker, I've always been a fan of it since I first saw it at the film Empire Strikes Back and saw how it was taken down, but just this, the, sure, the, the, the sheer sense of scale as George Lucas made these uh, monstrosities appear believable, and um, in doing that he had made an impression on my mind as a kid growing up and wanted to have a model myself, so full on adult. Got myself a model. Uh, it's a little one, but hey, it'll do. Moving forward, and just some other junky cars. What's great about this car? Uh, that, well, not a car, but a bulldozer here is that this here's got its tracks. Very hard to find any models with the tracks, and these tracks don't come off because the blades on it encloses the tracks to the body, as you can see. So in order to get at those tracks, you need to break everything apart. And then by, by the time you've done that, you've pretty much got a wrecked unit. So happy with that. That'll do. Uh, Ford Escort, very clean. Still got the decals, a bit faded, but boy, you know, how often do you find one of those around these days? Second hand. And more old cars to go into the collection. Very happy with this is a second hand find. That's a, a Vauxhall concept car. I don't know if they went into full production with that. I do highly find it unlikely simply because of the period in time and bolts will get into the wedge design as you can see and matchbox have made it a thing for 
character is today. Um, these are a series of trailers I've put aside over the years. They're miscellaneous, as you can see, and I can probably be attached to more to see anything of the similar scale to fit into them. Now, this is Elido. And Elido is um, a, a spelling of a person's name backwards called Odell. And Odell or, has um, something to do with the original toy manufacturing business. And I'll take a risk to say it was um, Matchbox, but somebody can help me out there. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that story about um, Liddell. A load of, is that there's a connection to that name to uh, previous other successful car making model, model making brands. Okay, coming into the second hand finds and uh, we've got a, what is that, a Ferrari 40. Jaguar XJ220 um, Dematasso, and I've got a, a Dematasso um, other variety in red. Then I'm going to the Porsche series uh, 959, and I think that is a 95, another version of a 959. And then some muscle cars going up into the, another Hemi, and another scale of a Hemi at a larger, and then a ridiculous matchbox with a oversized engine, and then coming down to these. Um, hot wheel track cars of sorts. I'm not a real big fan of them, but because Hot Wheels made them, thing, I've just gone and collected a couple of few of them. Nothing big, nothing important. And then ambulances, miscellaneous gear again that I see lying on the second hand shelves that um, may not have any value, uh, but in the character's world, and sometimes those that do customizations can get these and part them out. I like to find wheels eventually and see if I can get them re put together, uh, put back together, reassembled, um, and then we've got a complete unit, all good. But you know, these things take time, patience, and they're always going to be a work in progress for the collection. So those left aside, um, and the other ones that I do have that are complete will go on display with the hope that one day I may be able to come across a set of wheels to complete that, and then I've got two. Cool. Um, that's a piece of rubbish, don't need it, um, we'll get rid of it at a later stage unless I find a trailer for it. Um, again, another piece of rubbish, light plastic, made in China, uh, just fills the gap for now. Don't really have a purpose for it, don't care about it, don't, don't want to keep it. Uh, these are Siku trucks, I've got a, e, a European um, rocket, um, I need, maybe need a black trailer that has a rocket mount and then I can um, marry all the three pieces together and that's part of how I do my collection. Is get parts of and then um, get lucky enough to be able to say marry them together at a later stage. Um, sometimes you get away with it because they work in scales, and other times they're just too far out of scale to actually work and have any manners. So break them apart and just get a bit patient with your time. So, yep, that's a bit of a work in progress. This here is a bit of a work in progress, so that just gives you an insight as to people who collect but they end up with too much stuff. What do they do with it? Well, I wait for my time to be able to put these things together at a future stage. Who knows? If I can get them together, suddenly this thing here that's more or less worth about a dollar then can be marketed at a later stage, not to say it would, at about two, five dollars, and I've only paid a dollar, dollar fifty to put it back together. Who knows? So that's the idea. Um, I don't really go for resale. Um, my sense of collecting, and trust me, this is only a portion. My sense of collecting is I collect what I want. But as you can see through the collection, I collect what is real or what the car companies are making uh, or what has been made in the past or what has been great entertainment in terms of childhood entertainment and the things that I as a, I as a kid enjoyed being entertained and especially the Batman TV series, totally crazy. Also got into Dukes of Hazard as well as Knight Rider. Um, cars, boys, cars, there's you know, tight marriage between the two. Uh, Back to the Future series, I've got a whole heap of these. So these are all the things that I really fanned out on as a teenager or, or as a kid um, and saw a whole heap of these cars in the flesh growing up and continued to follow old stuff, not not royally, but just liked stuff that passed my eye and just collected it, gathered it, and eventually we've come to something of a, a moderate to significant collection. <laughs> No, that's just a snapshot of what I put together. Right, that's 20 minutes. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one.